welcome, this is Power Electronics, and in this video series, there's going to be a two-part series, we're going to cover the uh, boost converter. It's one of the different types of DC to DC converters. In the description area, you'll find some links for further reading on the design of boost converters. So let's look at the overview. Um, first, I'd like to provide a block diagram of the DC to DC boost converter. Then we're going to derive the equations that relate the input voltage to the output voltage. And after that, we'll derive the equations that relate the input current to the output current. And uh, in a boost converter, our output voltage is going to be greater than our input voltage. And we have a reciprocal relationship with the current in which the output current will be less than the input current. And it's the conservation of energy that governs that equation. And finally, we'll derive a design equation for sizing the inductor. Just like in the buck converter, the inductor controls the current flowing through the whole circuit, and we want to look at that ripple current through that inductor. Here's a schematic diagram of the boost converter with the components in place. There's a couple of things you'll notice on this schematic. First, we have a MOSFET that is in a low side switch position. And we also have a diode, and the diode is acting as a high side switch. Schematically, we can look at that with just a switching arrangement. When the low side switch is closed, current is going to flow through the inductor, and we build up a magnetic field. When we open the low side switch and close the the high side switch, the current, and again, current cannot change instantaneously through an inductor, will flow and go over to the load and come through as an output. And we'll switch the high side and low side with the low side with a duty cycle of D, so its on time will be D times T sub S. Now let's look at the node voltage because we want to derive an equation that relates the output voltage to the input voltage. We'll make some assumptions. Uh, like in the last videos on the buck converter, we assume that the current flowing through the inductor is continuous. So we are in what's called continuous conduction mode. We assume that the output voltage and the output current are both constant. So I, IO is constant and VO is constant. Now let's look at this node voltage VA. When the switch is closed, VA is basically shorted to ground. And when the switch is open, when we open this switch and then close the high side switch, our output voltage is the same potential as VA. So the node voltage at VA is oscillating up and down from zero to, to the output voltage with a duty cycle of, of D. And here's our switching period T sub S. Now let's look at the voltage across the inductor because this will allow us to obtain the equations for the current through the inductor. When this switch is closed, and the high side switch is open, the voltage across the inductor is the input voltage. When we open the low side switch and close the high side switch, the voltage across the inductor becomes the input voltage minus the output voltage. And recall for a boost converter, our output voltage is greater than our input voltage, so this term will be less than zero. Because the output voltage is greater than the input voltage, that term VI minus V0 will be, will be less than zero. Now, the voltage across the inductor, its average value has to equal zero, so this area above the axes will equal this area below the axes. Now we have the voltage across the inductor. We can now derive the equations of the current through the inductor. Recall from the past video that the current through an inductor, I sub L, 
was equal to 1 over L times the integral from, let's say, 0 to D T of S times the voltage across the inductor V of tau, D tau, where tau is our dummy variable. And because the voltage across the inductor is constant, we will obtain an equation where I max is equal to 1 over L times, times the period that that switch is closed, which is D times T sub S, plus its initial condition, which is I min. So the current through the inductor starts to ramp up through that period. When we open the MOSFET or open that low side switch, the current will now flow through the diode and its voltage is VI minus VO. Again, it's a constant, so when we integrate a constant and it's a negative constant, we will get a linear function and it will be a linear function with a, a negative slope. And it will start at I max, our initial condition, and then ramp back down to I min. And that happens in the time period at which that switch is open, 1 minus D times the switching frequency. And so we get this, wave, this current waveform through the inductor. Using the equations for the current through the inductor, we can derive the input-output relationship. V out is equal to VI divided by 1 minus D, where D is the duty cycle of the low side switch. We do that by substituting I min into this equation. That results in I max is equal to 1 over L V in dts plus 1 over l v in minus v out times 1 minus d ts plus i max the i max on the left hand side of the equation and the right hand side of the equation cancel out we can also divide or multiply through the equation by l which will cancel out the L's, and divide by T sub S, which cancels out the T sub S, which leaves us with zero is equal to V in times D, the duty cycle, plus V in minus V out times one minus the duty cycle. We can solve for V in, or solve for V out for that matter, and let me rearrange it by placing that on the left-hand side. That results in V out minus V in times 1 minus D is equal to V in times D. Solving for V out, V out is equal to V in plus V in times D over 1 minus D which is equal to, and if we do the math and cross multiply by one minus D, the D's then in the numerator will cancel out. We get VN times one over one minus D. And there's our equation up on top relating the input voltage to the output voltage. So the output voltage provided that the duty cycle is somewhere between zero and one. Um, obviously you don't wanna to go to those extremes of zero and one. And typically you don't go probably less than 20%, 30%, greater than say 70% or 80% uh, to, to obtain the input output. Now let's derive the equation for the in, that relates the input current to the output current. And for here, we assume that the power in is equal to the power out. Using the passive sign convention, we see that minus V in times I in plus 
IO times VO must sum to zero, conservation of energy. So really this is, the in, and, and the one way to express this is the input power equals the output power. And so if we solve this equation, we see that VN times IN is equal to I out, V, v out. And we can solve for IN. IN is equal to I out times V out over V in, but V out is equal to V in divided by one over D. The V ins cancel out and there we see that I in is equal to I out divided by one minus D. So as our output voltage increases, our output voltage is greater than our input voltage, our output current decreases. Or conversely, our input current must increase. So our input current is greater than our output current, and our input voltage is less than our output voltage all by that factor of one over D. Finally, we can get an equation that helps us to design the inductor based on the ripple current through the inductor, our switching frequency F sub S, our input and our duty cycle. And we can obtain that from this equation right there. Recall that delta I L through the inductor is I max minus I min. It is this voltage right there, or the, not voltage, this current right there. It's the current ripple. And so if we take that equation and subtract I min from both left hand and right hand sides, we obtain I max minus I min is equal to one over L V I D T S. And solving for L and substituting delta I L into this equation, we see that L is equal to V in times the duty cycle divided by the ripple current through the inductor and then I'm going to use the reciprocal of the switching period, which is the switching frequency. That's more typical to use that switching frequency. And there's our equation governing the size of the inductor given uh, the design of our duty cycle, our input, and our switching frequency. Let's review the key points. Uh, in this video, we presented the schematic diagram of the boost converter. It consisted of the main switch as a low side switch, which closed and shorted out that node A. And the current started to, to ramp up and flow through the inductor. And then we opened that low side switch. We used a diode as our high side switch, which automatically will conduct current when we uh, put the proper polarity across when we put the proper voltage polarity across the the diode and that diode conducted to the output we assume the output voltage in the in the current are constant uh, we used constant output voltage for this one in the next video we'll use uh, constant current to derive the uh, capacitor sizing we also assume this was a continuous conduction mode and an average output current uh, uh, equal to I sub O. We obtained a relationship. Our output is equal to our input divided by one minus the duty cycle, where again, the duty cycle is the uh, duty cycle on the low side switch, which was a MOSFET for this example. And uh, the input current is equal to the output current divided by one minus the duty cycle. And we then obtained an equation on how to size or what the appropriate size of inductor based on different design parameters that you would use in, in your boost converter uh, design process. In the next video, we're going to continue on and we're going to look at 
using these equations to size the capacitor and to look at the sizing for the MOSFET and the diode.